So here I am with my review for the movie Infinity Pool for you. The new thriller horror style movie starring Alexander Skarsgård and Mia Goth. Is this film any good? I'm going to talk about it. Welcome back to the channel everyone and welcome to this new review of this 2023 movie which is rated 18 and directed by Brandon Cronenberg who is the son of David Cronenberg and let me tell you that apple obviously hasn't fallen too far from that proverbial tree. Yes, so there I was minding my own business last yesterday afternoon when I get a message from long time commenter and watcher of the channel, Stephen Luther. All the way across from the States. Um, and he goes to me, AJ, have you watched this film, Infinity Pool? And I said, well, no, I haven't. I'm aware of it. But no, I haven't watched it. Not really my cup of tea. But lo and behold, I sat down last night and watched this film that wasn't my cup of tea. And an hour and 57 minutes later, I wasn't sure that I'd made the right decision. So here I am, talking about it. There we go. Um, so this film here, basically, it follows um, the story of James Foster played by Alexander Skarsgård, who's on holiday on the fictitious island of Latolga with his wife, M. Foster, played by Cleopatra Coleman. And um, Alexander Skarsgård's um, character is a sort of... He's a, he's a published writer, but not particularly good one. He's got one book out, that sort of a thing. His wife is super rich. He's sort of living with her, living off her money, so to speak. While on this island, he meets um, Gabby Bauer, played by Mia Goff. This individual, this woman that um, has purportedly read his book, enjoyed his book. And they strike up this, um, this friendship, which is very sort of flirtatious, even though she's with a partner and he's there with his wife. And they get together on this one day. They go out as a couple to this beach um, where you can't go and take a pee up a tree without being sexually assaulted by Mia Goff. Um, giving you one off the cuff. Um, and then on the way back, while intoxicated, Alexander Skarsgård, or James Foster, he decides to drive back in the dark under the influence of alcohol like they all are and hits and kills a person en route. They leave the body, they sort of run away after an argument about it and the next day he gets arrested by the police. But then comes the sort of twist to this story in that there's this sci-fi element that if you've got enough money you can get away with these sort of crimes because what you can do is you can have yourself cloned and then the clone will be killed or will be executed, so to speak, um, while you have to watch, you have to watch this happen. But you get off scot-free because the clone has all your memories, all this sort of a thing. So essentially the person who wants the justice is getting the justice and you're getting um, um, done for, for the crime that you've committed. And thusly this happens. And then it turns out there's a group of people, including Mia Goth, that this has happened to, that then they partake in this, and this leads to them um, indulging in more criminal activity because they know that they can get away with it. They know that another version of themselves can be sort of taken up on that charge. And the film sort of goes on from there. The film is, is, is very heavy in some of its um, metaphors, its visual metaphors on screens. Masks play a big part of this. This these monstrous looking masks play a big part of the narrative, uh, and and that's kind of metaphoric for the sort of monster within, the sort of the loss of your soul while doing this, and and what you become on the inside as you lose. Essentially, you lose all humanity. Now, there's a good story in this film somewhere. There's a good idea trapped within this film, but the film itself, for me, it was. Um, too long, it was boring, it wasn't very visually interesting whatsoever, a very sort of 
dowdy colour palette to it. The film starts off with, with camera angles off kilter to make you as a viewer realise that, that something's not right. Something's not right here in this place and you go in with this sort of... Um, and then it does upside down and all this and twisty turny stuff uh, and that sort of stuff I don't really like to be honest but I suppose it's effective for what it needs to portray and get across um, the, the idea of, of this cloning technique and the fact that it's like the police that have it on this island and you can just get away with it with a bit of bribery you can do this stuff is a bit silly a bit sort of far-fetched out there where's this technology come from that sort of stuff isn't answered or anything like this as the film progresses it becomes um quite sort of um, um y you get these sex scenes that are done through the influence of the characters being on drugs so it's it's very sort of psychedelic and um you know quick cuts zooms in zooms out um, very very weird stuff sort of unnatural looking stuff that goes on to, from being a sex scene between two characters to being a full-blown orgy um that sort of stuff is very but some of this it's um symbology within that just it, very very weird very strange um yeah, I don't know what I was seeing. I don't know what I was seeing. It needs to be watched again, paused, slow mode, and I don't mean that in that sort of a way. But some of it is very, very weird stuff, and, and the film progresses like this. So basically, it's, it's a study of, of a character losing his humanity while on this progression of, of this story. And like I said, I don't know. The film leaves too many questions. Now, as I said, that Brandon Cronenberg is the director of this. He's the son of David Cronenberg. Um, which is great, I suppose, that you know that he's gone into directing himself. However, it would have been nice to see him direct something that that isn't David Cronenberg esque in style, um, if that makes sense. Um, you know, be your own person, be your own director. But what you're doing is you're, you're you're effectively doing what your father does. So I'm not too keen on that aspect of it either. Um, acting wise, Alexander Skarsgård is a good actor. He, he's good, and he. You know, he carries himself through this film fantastically. Even Mia Goth is very good in this film. Um, I can't knock her for it. Um, but the film just leaves me empty. It leaves me wishing that I hadn't seen it. It's one of them many a film that I watch, like Midsummer, things like that, that leave a bad taste in my mouth. Um, and, you know, I, I wish that I hadn't really sat down and, and partook in. Halfway through, I did feel like switching the film off. But I thought, no, I'll see it out to the end and, and give you my thoughts on it. Um, so for me, this is a film that, that totally, it doesn't, doesn't work. And even at the end, you know, you've got a scene where he's he's broken down, the character's broken down, and, and Mia Goff um, essentially mothers him in a sense, in that she's holding him like, like a mother would cradle a baby, and she pulls out her, her, her breast, smothers it in blood that's his own blood from her, from a you know from a clone that he's bad to death with his own hands wipes the blood on her breast and then sticks the breast in his mouth for him to suckle on it this kind of stuff is you know you've got to have a mind to think up this sort of stuff and write this sort of stuff like i said there's an interesting story within here the cloning stuff and the idea of of, of the clone taking your your place for a crime that you've done but that clone having all your memories essentially it is you getting killed while you stay on and watch it and, and the effect that that has but like I said there's there's elements where when the first killing has taken place a kid comes in who's who's uh, you know a younger member of the family to take his um you know to to get not revenge you know to basically kill him for, for the fact that he's killed his father and, and the kid's got a knife and it's like you, your kid can go up to him and just kill him any way that he wants stab, 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 stab with no sort of thought on hold on a minute, this is a young person we're putting a knife in his hand allowing him to go and kill someone okay, that has wronged the family but what would that do psychologically to that child there's them sort of aspects and questions to the film that, that uh, just just put me off kilter with it and put me in the wrong place mentally uh, and I come away not particularly enjoying projects like this 
because they're just so wrong. Anyway, I've blabbered on enough about this film. Is this a film that you've seen? Um, is this a film that I'm, 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 I'm sure that this will be adored by the horror community of people um, and, and I wouldn't knock them for it. You know, art is subjective. We all have our own thoughts and what we like and what we don't like and that's what's so fun about it and, and being able to have that conversation of why it worked and didn't work for, for each individual. So if this film worked for you or if it didn't work for you, let me know down below in the comments. Did you enjoy this um, or didn't you? I didn't. And I'm going to leave it there. This is AJ. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you all on the next one. Take care and goodbye.